my dear brothers and my sisters in Islam, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the only Lord of this universe. We bear the witness that none is worthy of worship except Allah. And we bear the witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, it is very unfortunate that somebody has been doing deeds all his life, 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, and then by the end of the time when he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he doesn't find anything. Everything which he did, it became useless. It went in vain, not beneficial. So the things which you have done, the deeds, the prayers, and the charity and everything else, what you have offered, you don't find any reward for all these things. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made them, as he mentioned in Quran, فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً مَنْثُورًا Like the ash, when somebody fires any woods or something like that, and then at the end there is, remains ash. If you just blow, it goes away. It doesn't have any weight. It doesn't have any value. You don't get any benefit. So we need to, to be responsible and we need to be careful and we need to be cautious whether what we are doing, it will remain for us or it will go in vain. So there are th certain things which Allah have mentioned in Quran that if somebody has done this, then their amal, they will go in vain. The most important one which we need to remember and which will cause your deeds to go in vain. This is what we call shirk. To associate partners with Allah. To make someone as a partner of Allah. In ibadah. In dua. In salah. In sajda. In charity. Or whatsoever. Whatsoever you are doing. It is a kind of ibadah. If you are associating any partner in this act of ibadah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ana aghna shuraka'i ani shirk. That I am the one who doesn't care about the partners. I don't care about the partners. Man amila amalan, أَشْرَكَ مَعِي غَيْرِي تَرَكْتُهُ وَشِرْكَهُ If somebody did anything and he associated any partner with me in that act of ibadah, then I left. I left his act of ibadah and I left his shirk. تَرَكْتُهُ وَشِرْكَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like this. That somebody associates partner with Allah. It is very unfortunate that people, they don't understand the meaning of shirk. They don't understand different types of shirk. They don't give much importance to understand that what is shirk and how it is dangerous and how it could be 
dangerous and how it can destroy my deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned many prophets in Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. And then after Ibrahim, there are many other prophets which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. And at the end, having mentioned all these prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ أَشْرَكُوا لَحَبِطَ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُوا If they committed shirk, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy their deeds. They will not have any benefit. They will not gain any benefit from their deeds. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتْ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says that we reveal to you وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ And those who were prophets before you لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ If you committed shirk لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ Your deeds will go away in vain. Useless. You will not get any benefit. Whatsoever you have been doing all your life, by the end of the time, you will not get any reward. Because you have been associating partner with Allah. And Allah doesn't like it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika liman yasha. Allah doesn't forgive anyone who is associating partner with Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive anyone else. وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ So this shirk is the utmost dangerous thing. And it is not something which we can say, oh no, we are Muslims. And we are not associating partner with Allah. And we are not doing this. We are not doing that. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا يُؤْمِنُوا أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ That most of the people, majority of the people, they believe in Allah, and at the same time they are mushrikun. They believe in Allah and they are mushrikun. So do you think that the people of Mecca, they did not believe in Allah? They were. Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab, Ubayya, Utba, Shayba, all these big names of Quraysh and their chiefs and their leaders, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, وَلَيْنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ قُلْ مَنْ رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ السَّبْعِ وَرَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ سَيَقُولُونَ لِلَّهِ قُلْ لِمَنِ الْأَرْضِ وَمَنْ فِيهَا There are many ayahs in Quran which say that if you ask them who created this earth, who created the universe, who created all this Count and who is running the affairs. وَمَنْ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمَرُ فَسَيَقُولُونَ اللَّهِ قُلْ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ So it doesn't mean that they were not believing in Allah. They were. But at the same time, they were associating partner with Allah. And how did Allah say about that? وَيَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَضُرُّهُمْ وَلَا يَنْفَعُهُمْ وَيَقُولُونَ هَا أُولَاءِ شُفَعَاؤُنَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ They worship someone other than Allah. 
who does not give them any benefit and who does not cause them any harm. They cannot do anything. Then why they are worshipping these deities and these idols? They say, وَيَقُولُونَ هَؤُلَاءَ شُفَعَاؤُنَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ And somewhere Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they say, مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَا إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَى We just respect them because they are like a link between us and Allah. They are intercessors between us and Allah. Or we call them, we call upon them and they call upon Allah and they are a kind of link and intercessor between us and Allah. This is what they were thinking. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَتُنَبِّئُونَ اللَّهَ بِمَا لَا يَعْلَمُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَلَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Do you think that Allah doesn't know about you? And these people, they know much more about you. And they are intercessors before Allah. And they tell Allah about you, that this person such and such, he needs such and such thing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the one who knows everything. قُلَ تُنَبِّيُونَ اللَّهِ بِمَا لَا يَعْلَمُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَلَا فِي الْأَرْضِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى عَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ So that is very, the most significant thing in our deen is to understand what is Tawheed and what is Shirk. Because unfortunately, if there is any element of Shirk in your thinking or in your actions or in your ideology or in your understanding of deen if you did not if you did not understand what is tawheed and what is shirk and if you not if you if you if you did not purify yourself from all kind of shirk then don't expect that you get any benefit of all these things before allah that is the first thing walaqad uhiya ilayka wa ila alladhina min qablik لَإِنْ أَشَرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ If you did shirk or if the prophets before or their parents or their wives or their children وَمِنْ آبَائِهِمْ وَأَزْوَاجِهِمْ وَذُرِّيَاتِهِمْ If anyone did shirk then it is my final decision that they will not get any benefit of their deeds لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ لَحَبِطَ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ That is the most dangerous thing. And then the other thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَرِهُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأَحْبَطَ أَعْمَالَهُمْ If you don't like what Allah has revealed in terms of Quran, in terms of sharia, in terms of deen, in terms of system of life, in terms of living, in terms of dealing with other people, in terms of economy, in terms of politics, in terms of social life, in terms of everything, what Allah has mentioned and what Allah has revealed in Quran and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a system of life, as a way of life. If you don't like it, oh, what is this? Salah, oh, five times every day. Zakah, oh, this is a kind of fatigue. Fasting, oh, so difficult. This, anything, so much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتِ Even in your heart, there should not be any kind of feelings. You know, some people they say, Oh, we... 
married, we arranged the marriage of our daughter and we gave this much and that, this and that. And now why we have to give them share in the inheritance? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you did not like what Allah has revealed, then your deeds are in vain. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَرِهُ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأَحْبَطَ أَعْمَالَهُمْ If you have this kind of feeling, why it is so? Why this hukam? Why this ruling? If you have any kind of dislike, then your deeds are gone. It will not remain anymore. You will not get any reward. You will not get any benefit. So be always careful in terms of deen, in terms of sharia, in terms of ruling of this deen. Because whatsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, it is not for the sake of Allah, it is for the sake of our own self. It is for the interest of our own self. Allah doesn't need. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ Whatsoever in this universe, everything is glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah doesn't need our ibadah. Allah doesn't need our prayers and our tasbihat and our tahleel and tahmeed and takbir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghani. And if there are certain rulings, they are for our own benefits. Prophet wasallam said that somebody has been doing ibadah, salah, fasting, and charity, and everything for 50 years and 60 years and more. And just before the end of his life, he just writes something in will. You know, well, this is what we write for our relatives and this and that. He just writes something in the will which Allah has forbidden and which Allah has prohibited. And he wants to forbid someone to get the benefit from his inheritance. Or he wants to give someone more. You know, many people, because we face these questions, many people come. I have this thing. I want to write this for my son. I want to write this thing, this thing for my daughter because this one is more close to me. She's looking after me. She's doing this to me. And this one is that to me. And the other one doesn't care about me. I don't want to give him anything. What Allah has given to someone, you are not in a position to prevent someone to take this share. And if you have written something, if you have decided something, or if you have prevented someone to, from something, then you just think that you have wasted all your life. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَرِهُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأَحْبَطَ أَعْمَالَهُمْ And the same, we have to respect Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we have to give him honor more than anything else. You know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا يؤمن وحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين That none of you can be a believer unless I am the most beloved one to him. Then from his own self, from his children, from all the people. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا ترفعوا أسواتكم فوق صوت النبي ولا تجهروا له بالقول كجهر بعضكم لبعض أن تحبط أعمالكم وأنتم لا تشعرون If you don't respect and if you don't honor and if you don't give this higher position to Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and you don't respect him and you raise your voice over the voice of Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and nowadays, because we are, after a long time, 
and Prophet Sallallahu has left this dunya. Now if somebody says to you that this is the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu this is the saying of Prophet Sallallahu and if you don't care, and if you don't respect, and if you don't practice, and if you don't listen, and you just ignore, and you think, oh, this is what people they are just talking about. If you don't respect Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says that your deeds will go in vain. وَلَا تَجْهَرُوا لَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ كَجَهْرِ بَعْضِكُمْ لِبَعْضِ أَن تَحْبَطَ أَعْمَالُكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ And the same thing, we extend a bit more. This is to follow Allah and His Messenger in our deen, in our way of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولِ وَلَا تُبْتِلُوا أَعْمَالَكُمْ O people, those who you say that we are believers, follow Allah and His Messenger. Follow Allah and His Messenger. وَلَا تُبْتِلُوا أَعْمَالَكُمْ And don't nullify your deeds. Don't make them batil. Because if you do not follow Allah and His Messenger, it means that whatsoever you're doing, you're nullifying it. Your salah, your fasting, your hajj, and everything else. If it is not in accordance with the sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu and that's why, you know, the, our rightly, rightly guided predecessors, our salaf, they say that no action can be a good action. No act of ibadah can be an act of ibadah or a good deed unless it meets two conditions. An yakuna al-amalu khalisan wa an yakuna al-amalu sawaban. Unless it is purely for the sake of Allah, anything what you, whatsoever you are doing, any act of ibadah, if it is purely for the sake of Allah and you are not associating any partner with Allah as we mentioned before, then it will be an act of ibadah. And the second condition is that it is according to the sunnah of Prophet ﷺ. If it is not according to the sunnah of Prophet ﷺ, no matter that you are doing it with good intention, you are doing it for the sake of Allah, but if it is not according to the sunnah, then it is not acceptable before Allah. So make this a criterion. Make this a criterion in your life that whatever you do, it is for the sake of Allah. And secondly, it is according to the sunnah. Even if it is a small act, you will get more ajr. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi as our role model. But if you have not fulfilled these two conditions, if you bring actions like mountain, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them like ash, which will not have any weight and which will not have any value before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is... Just a short reminder for ourselves, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq so that we do ibadah for the sake of Allah according to the sunnah of Prophet sallallahu alayhi and we do not associate any partner with Allah and we give the utmost significance and respect and honor to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we make his sunnah as a scale for our deeds that whatsoever is according to the sunnah we do it and whatsoever is not according to the sunnah we don't do it. You know sunnah is of two types. One is to do what Prophet ﷺ did 
And this is also sunnah which some people they ignore. To not do what he didn't do. This is called sunnah. Yani what he left, what he did not do, what he gave up. We have to give up. We have to leave it. Then we cannot say, oh, Prophet ﷺ did not forbid from this. You know, there are many people, they have this argument. When you tell them that it is not from the sunnah. So when we just say it is not from the sunnah, we should just avoid it. But if you say, oh, if it is not from the sunnah, but he did not forbid. So you tell me, did he forbid from doing salah six times a day? Or for example, we do four rak'ah in Isha, and we, if somebody wants to do five rak'ah, did he forbid anywhere? Nowhere. You just go through all the stock and all the books of hadith, you will not find any hadith in which Prophet ﷺ forbade. But we don't do it. Why? Because it is not from the sunnah. In ibadat, we say that what Prophet ﷺ, he did, we have to do it. And what he did not do, we don't have to do it. And if we do it, then it is an innovation. And if it is an innovation, then what Prophet Sallallahu said about the innovation, وَكُلُّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ وَكُلُّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ وَكُلُّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give us tawfiq. So we follow Prophet Sallallahu in all our actions of ibadah and we understand tawheed according to the principles of tawheed and we do not associate any part with Allah. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'ilil muslimin.